Welcome pottery peeps. I am Tiffany uh, with Hobble Creek Pottery. I'm doing my last kiln opening before I go into surgery tomorrow. I know you guys are um, probably sick and tired of hearing about that. It's like encompassing my whole world knowing that um, I've got to get everything ready for this. Um, also, I wanted to, I've got so many great well wishes from you, um, the people who have commented and, and so forth. It, it means so much to me and I, I just can't express my gratitude correctly on, on the people that have, that following the channel, subscribing to the channel, this channel's kind of, we did a thousand subscribers in, in a month. That's unbelievable. You know, I kind of started doing this because I've got students all over the place. They want to see their stuff. So it's like, well, let's do some kiln openings and I'll film them and um, they can see their stuff as soon as it comes out of the kiln until they can get here to actually pick it up. And so that's kind of where it started. Um, and then it started doing some tutorials too. And I'm just having a blast. So we'll keep doing it until it's not fun anymore, right? <laughs> Anyway, um, this is my last kiln opening. I will be loading a bisque um, as soon as um, I unload this. And then um, I'm handing it over to two of my students who have been with me the longest. Um, they're technically not students anymore. They're more apprentices. The way I run my studio is a little different than a lot of people. Um, it's more than just learning how to um, center and, and throw pots. We, uh, they learn how to run a full studio. Like the sale that we had on Saturday, part of um, uh, being a potter is you gotta learn how to sell your pots. Otherwise you're gonna bury yourself in pots. And so you gotta learn a, a way to get rid of them and hopefully pay for your hobby until it's a, a full blown business if that's where you wanna take your, your mud journey. And um, so two of the students that have been with me the longest, they don't technically get a lot of tutorials anymore. They get more advice or tips on whatever it is they're making um, and so forth like that. But they also get to learn how to run the kilns and how to mix glazes, how to um, do all of the other things that, um, that, are in, that come with running your own studio. Um, how to properly clean your towels with a hose outside so you're not ruining your washer inside. Um, little things like that that um, you don't think of, nobody thinks of when they first learn to center, which is fine because you would be so totally overwhelmed. And um, I also wanted to um, thank everybody who has um, sent well wishes um, t for me toward my surgery. Um, I can't express how much that means to me, my, the gratitude. This, this channel has just been really, really fun. And um, anyway, I'll get all... You know anyway so let's get let's get to the fun stuff what you actually came here for and also for my students who um want to see what happened in the heat of the fire so let's lower you down we got some fun stuff in here um i already see some problems that i'm gonna have to figure out a way to fix but um whoops <laughs> i i got started before i i hit play this is hannah's um this is her beautiful bowl, her first bowl that she tried marbling with. Uh, she's gone to pot, T-W-O, on um, Instagram. You can follow her there. She's got a very, very great style. Um, she carved this in with the marbling to bring out some um, a different pattern. But this is the Terra Red with the B mix and with just clear on it. This is another one of hers. She kind of squared this off, gave it a undulated rim. I love a good undulated rim. You get to the point where you've been doing pottery so long that you don't want a perfect rim. You want, you want something different, the movement. This is also one of hers. And she didn't actually want glaze on this. This is all done with under glazes and it's a lampshade. How great is that? <laughs> Love her style. This is a lot of this stuff is going to be Hannah's. She is prolific. For someone with three kids and one just being like five months old, she's very prolific. And I don't know what glaze this is. I think it might be Honey Flux with Blue Rutil. Don't know. Another one of hers. She makes her own stamps. 
stamps her clay, makes the cylinder. That's just stunning. Wow, I like that one. Yeah, and I'm not even gonna take a guess. On some of hers, I've guessed, ooh, she's got some cleanup. I think this is Ancient Jasper, <laughs> and I think it got away from her. Love these advancer shelves. She'll be able to clean that up and save it. It didn't take any clay away, like with the other shelves. You'll get chunks of your pot glued to the shelf, and then you gotta take a hammer and chisel to your shelf or a grinder. But she'll be able to take the Dremel, or I've got a, a diamond core sanding pad. She'll be able to clean that up and save her pot. So even though these adventure shelves are expensive, they really, really are, they paid for themselves over and over again with pots saved and shelves saved because that doesn't, when that happens to the shelf, it doesn't damage the shelf. Let's see if I can get that off of there. This is um, a cauldron. We've been doing a lot of cauldrons. Um, this is Naptime Potter, Tess. Turned out really nice. This is one of Caroline's. Caroline is my youngest student. She is 15. She does a lot of sculptural work. She does some very, very interesting stuff. I believe this is the root beer. I'm not sure what the blue is, what she put on with the root beer. And that's Coyote's root beer. Just an amazing, amazing glaze. So these are some pieces that have come out of this orb of hers. They weren't um, scored on hard, or strong enough or deep enough. And so they fell off in the drying. She's gonna try and epoxy them on since this is not quite a functional piece. Another one of Hannah's. God, that's just gorgeous. And she made those stamps, bis stamps, and then she's pressing them into the clay. Just love that texture. Love this glaze combo. I think it might be um, maybe Indigo Float with Honey Flux. Another one of hers, um, Gone to Pot. These are all hand built, pinch pot style. Ancient. Ancient technique. I love that she is doing that. This one actually has a lid that made one of the firings before, but um, hopefully she took the lid home because I don't see it here. Another tumbler. I think that's the cobalt on the bottom. And you know what? She's been doing a lot with um, Arctic Blue, Amico's Arctic Blue. So I think this might be Arctic Blue over the cobalt. All right, so Fairy Houses made it in, but I obviously used the wrong glaze. <clears throat> I thought this weathered stone was the right glaze. It's not. So now I got a problem because those stones are way too blue. <laughs> so I think I have a way of fixing it. This is not, I mean, it's not a functional piece in the sense that um, you're gonna eat off of it, of course, because it's Fairy House. So I might go get some acrylic paint and do a wash, or I have done um, black ink on um, crazed pottery before, and so I might add the black ink to the stones to tone it down, because that's insane. That's like an electric blue. I really hate it. This was uh, an Amico blue. And it's supposed to be a satin blue, and I know I've used it before. I don't know why it's come out this blue, but I gotta tone that down before I give it to her. But everything else is amazing. I did the uh, Mako's Robin, Robin egg on the body of the house, the root beer. I did the fire brick on the hearts, on the shutters, on the rose. I did the hydrangea on the butterfly, the blue hydrangea. I did the holly green spectrums, holly green on the leaf. Again, and then the this was the um, Mako's Desert Dusk for the thatched roof. Everything else I'm super, super happy with, except for the stones. So I'm gonna have to fix that. 
But there's three of them in here like this, and I'm glad I fired them before I did the other five. <laughs> so this one was done exactly the same way. Butterfly and roses and so forth, except for the body is um, Aurora Green. I actually really, really love the Aurora Green, but I really, really hate that blue on the stones. So, tell ya, constantly learning, constantly adjusting, if you're a potter. And this one was done with the robin egg blue again. Robin egg green, robin egg, or maybe it's just called robin's egg, I don't know. But everything else done the same way as the others. All right, this is Caroline's. She is my sculptor and my hand builder. She does, if you remember, if you've watched the video, she also did the dead bodies. She is gonna put this in the garden. It's for the bees. So hopefully they'll move in because this is quite the house for the bees. Look at all of that that she's done. She just puts her head down and just starts doing things and she constantly amazes me with what she does. I mean, all of that's carved, you know, and then she's appliqued the flowers um, all over it, just, and then put holes in it. And it's also a rattle <laughs> because some of the holes that she's put in it, we, she couldn't get clay out. So we got some dust out. There's some there, but um, really, really very, she's very, you know, she's the, I can see her in galleries as she gets older because she just she looks at the world a different way. And I just love her view of the world when she's doing stuff like this. All right, we'll slowly put that down so it doesn't go rolling. Okay, so this shelf has glaze on it. And I might have shown you before, but if you take that, I'm gonna do it not over my killer. But it literally just scrapes right off. Sure beats getting my grinder out and going after those other shelves and the dust and everything. Oh. And then adding kiln wash, what a mess. So I'll clean this one up later. All right, so this is one of the problem shelves. I had pinholing on some pots. Seems to be a potter's struggle is the pinholing on certain glazes, certain clays, and I got a post stuck to a shelf. I have noticed that sometimes my posts like to stick to these advancer shelves. This is another one by Hannah, uh -huh. gone to pot, and so is this. She really got into the marbling. She marbled that and then carved the whole bowl. It feels really cool, looks cool, feels cool. All right. So, this is Coastal Blue on the B-Mix, and this is when I was having problems with it pinholing, but I think I got it. So this one, I did coastal blue over the whole bowl, and then I did, I also have some running, so I've got some cleanup. <laughs> but see, if I had fired this on the your standard kiln shelves, I would have lost this bowl. Um, and it's a beautiful bowl, but so coastal blue, main glaze. I had a bunch of pinholing out here and uh, then shadow blue. Nope, not shadow blue, nebula on the rim. And it's just stunning. And it looks like this firing took out, I don't feel or see any, any um, pinholing. So I might've done it. I just have some cleanup to do. That was worth doing. Thing is, when you your pots don't turn out the way you want them, you don't have anything to lose by refiring them. And this one didn't work. And I can't remember what I did on this. It's really pretty. 
I think I did seaweed with the coastal blue and the shadow blue. But got that one pinhole right there. See it? And that's a sharp one. But I did get rid of, I had a bunch on the rim. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that one. All right, I'm going to get this shelf out. And then I can, yep, pry that guy off. A lot of bowls in here. Try to keep all my posts by size organized so that when I'm loading the film, I don't have to hunt. All right. Another one. This is blue stone on um, the SRF clay. Um, this is Hannah's Gone to Pot. And while I've got her bowl, a lot of her faces that she makes ma magnets out of, she also puts a hanger in the back. So they can be hung on the wall. Love her faces. She did really well at the sale. People loved her slugs and her faces and her bowls. Another little slug. Let's see, did I get all the slugs? Because I got I hide them around the pots. It's kind of cool when you look into the kiln and you got all these little things hiding around the bowls. These are Nightcraft Co. mugs by, and she did the Satin Patina and um, Dante's Lumos that we mix up here that Dante from Earth Nations um, is amazing with sharing his glaze recipes. And we love this Lumos. So that turned out really good. This was, these were refires too because the Satin Patina also pinholed. I don't know if it was that firing or what but it looks like we well she's got some something rough there i don't know she'll have to look at it see what she if she wants to try grinding it or not this was also a refire um because she had pinholing in the obsidian from amico but it looks like she we took care of that too so, and apparently I have cut myself on something. Probably the glass on one of those shelves. I'm really good at that. <laughs> I'm always got something going on, something cut. Um, another bowl by Hannah. Gone to pot. She's just got a very earthy um, feel to her things. If you saw the kiln firing last time, this is the bowl that pinholed on me. So I just stuck it, I didn't do anything else to it, stuck it into the kiln, fired it again, and this time they're gone. But I do have a post or a stilt that's going to require some work. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you. But isn't that pretty? That is really pretty. It's actually prettier now than it was before. really pretty but work that probably won't happen for a while so this is a mug that also had um some pinholes shadow blue coastal blue it must have just been that one firing but what's interesting about this because i put it up on stilts i kind of like this when this happens when it runs um if it's level i will leave the glaze like that because then you've got little yep it's level you got little glazed feet. It's kind of fun. I don't know. They actually sell really well. People really like them that way. So if you know you're going to have a lot of glaze on your pot, um, put it up on a stilt and just let that glaze make some feet. If you have the advancer shelves. If you don't have the advancer shelves, I don't recommend it. You'll just have a mess to clean up and it won't be worth it. <laughs> so I did that on these two. Oh, but they... Oh, that's pretty. So this is Nebula Clayscapes with the Coastal Blue on the rim. I love that. Love that. I don't know if you can see, see that little stardust in the bottom. Oh, I just love it. 
I knew these were going to be close, so I fired them up on stilts. They actually came close, but they didn't actually go run to the bottom. That's, that's a winner. Okay, let's see if this one did okay. Oh, it did. So this one's like a wine goblet done the same way. And I threw this on the wheel and morphed it. <laughs> Hit it with uh, my finger, put some divots in it, and it's actually really fun to hold. I like that. I like that a lot. Hmm, that might go in my cupboard. All right, and again, I've got cleanup on this shelf. All right, this is basically Hannah's killed. Well, no, there's a few things in there. So let me go ahead and get, she's got a berry bowl, and I was worried about the berry bowl, so I put it on a stilt. Did a great job. I'm not sure what glaze she's used on this one, but God, I just love her aesthetic. So many, many different ways you can take pottery, you know? And this, you know, very organic feel to the clay, the red clay, the way it's, it's a pinch pot, you know? I love it, love it. Another one of her bowls. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I think we've only had one problem so far. Knock on wood. I have no wood. Let's see. We'll knock on MDF. <laughs> All right. Another one of Tess's. That was a refire. Another cauldron. And success. I wonder if I just had a bad bad firing where it didn't quite get up to temp or who knows and this is pottery by mac love it little white pumpkin with black polka dots oh my goodness that is cute so so cute she's actually here in the studio right now so i'm gonna have to run this out and show her here in a minute she's gonna love that all right this is arctic blue and i believe this might be the sedona red by aardvark and then two marbled tumblers just um in clear that um i make myself Running out of room with the table because half the table is full of bisqueware that needs to go in here. Uh, I don't know what she's done, but that's gorgeous. So is that. God, look at those colors. I love the stamps she's made. Ah. Oh. I love how you show your students how to do something, how to make their own stamps, and then they just run with it. Look at that. Look at that, just, I think this is um, opulence eggshell over the red clay. The, that might be the SRF clay. She's been using Sedona red SRF, and then we just, switch to the terra red which we absolutely love and of course once we fall in love with it we can no longer get it <laughs> but i did hear that it might be in this week so and then a bunch of slugs yeah if you want any of her bowls or slugs message her on instagram at gone to pot two Here's a little um, flower bowl that I did. Oh, no, Haley did that. Haley did that on the Terra Red, and that is just the coastal blue on the Terra Red. How beautiful is that? No pinholes. I wonder if it was, um, I was getting down to the bottom of my bucket with the uh, coastal blue. 
and I mixed up a new batch and I haven't had any problems with the new batch and this one got a refire too because there were a couple of bumps on the edge and you can see where they were but they're not sharp so success and then we have by Savannah who is another one of my amazing artists sculptors uh oh well I don't know if I want to try and take that off good thing I put that on a cookie now she's got a pedestal <laughs> she's made a vampire <laughs> hunched over. That's cool. So she just might, I don't know if I, yeah, the, I think she's put the June bug on the dress and didn't take the glaze up high enough. And it's um, now on a cookie, but that's okay. She'll be on a pedestal. <laughs> um, Savannah is another amazing sculptor, sculpturist. I don't know how, what's the plural for sculptor. Um, they're just, those two together, wow. What they come up with just constantly amazes me. Um, Cause I showed her how to do the witches and she's now making vampires. And last night she uh, made warlocks. <laughs> so, all right, so that's it for me. I am gonna go ahead and put up this video um, probably today. And um, I'm not sure exactly when I'll get the next one up. I have cauldrons coming next, uh, if I can, and hopefully this weekend. Um, if not, I will see you next week, hopefully sometime, and we'll get back to it. And I hope wherever you are, you're having a great day, and people are kind, and um, just the universe is shining down on you. So um, thanks again for everything and all the well wishes, and we will see you in the next one. Might be on a walker. <laughs> so, all right, have a great day.